in Jesus' mighty name we. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Please, you may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want you to be responsive. Praise God. Say, I'm born again. God lives in me. Come on, God lives in me. God lives in me. I am the fruit of the resurrection. I am the fruit of the resurrection. God lives in me. I am an ambassador of Christ. I am an ambassador of Christ. I am his representative on the earth. Hallelujah. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God loves me. Come on, God loves me. I'm kept of God. I'm kept of God. I am kept of God. I am kept of God. Come on, no evil befalls me. No evil befalls me. The Lord protects me. The Lord guides me in all of my ways. In the name of Jesus. No evil befalls me. No evil befalls me. No plague befalls me. No pestilence befalls me. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Church, glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. Say the just shall live by faith. That's how we, the just, I mean the just shall live by faith. How many people have been justified in Christ? Romans 5 verse 1 says, having been justified in Christ, we now have peace with God. So the Bible says, the man that is justified, he will not live by emotions. He will not live by the environment. He will not live by what is going on outside. He's going to live by faith. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. So it's crucial that you understand faith. You know, I've been saying this for a while because... The life of God. Faith is the takeability of the saints in what God has provided. Grace is what God has done. Faith is how we take what God has done. So faith is our positive response to what God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, the title, Ambassadors of Christ. So look at it, for example. This is part four. Look at it, for example. The Bible says that um, we have been saved. By grace. What else? Through faith. Meaning, grace for you is useless without faith. Are you getting it? It's just like God has saved the world, but it's useless to them until they respond to it. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. So, faith is our positive response to the will of God. Hallelujah. So the fact that the Bible says no evil befalls you does not actually mean no evil will befall you. Are you hearing me? But when I see in the Bible that no evil will befall me and I take a hold of it. Church, say take a hold of it. Take, you see, I, I need you to learn how to live by faith. Because the just actually is supposed to walk. Me, a walk is a continuum. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. So, faith is my positive response. It's a positive response. A continuous response. A stand. Faith is standing with God intentionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith is not standing with your emotions. Faith is not standing with how you feel. Hallelujah. Faith is standing with God. Yeah. Okay. Before we get into one or two things, let's get into one or two things. Look at Psalm 91. Let's just 
Read that. Let's, I want us to just read it. Let's read it. Let's read Psalm 9. Just a few parts there. Because I want you to see that you can practice faith. You know, you can, you can build an environment of faith. Because faith is word activated. You can write it down. Faith is word activated. So meaning that there is no faith without words. That's why when we say God is a God of faith, the first exposure you have to God in Genesis chapter 1 is, and God said, Hallelujah. Mark eleven twenty three tells you that. 22 tells you, have the God kind of faith. What is the God kind of faith? 23 tells you. If you shall say to a mountain, be thou removed. Hallelujah. Be thou removed. And be thou cast out. And shall not doubt in your heart. You shall have what you say. How did you get saved? Romans 10 verse 9. Believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. Let's look at, yeah, let's look at Romans 10 verse 8 and 9. Then we'll come back to Psalms 91. And then we'll come back to the service. Because we are taking a diversion at the moment. But I, I, I want you to understand, especially for the saints, that you would have to live by faith. Look at Romans 10. Look at verse 8. Now, this is talking about salvation. So the way we get saved is the way we live our life in salvation. Look at verse 8. But what saith it? The word is near thee. Are we in verse 8? Romans 10 verse 8. Are we there? Yeah. The word is near thee. Even in thy. Okay. Yeah. Even in thy. Where should we find the word? The word is near thee is not enough. But it should be in your mouth. The word is there. It is in thy mouth. Then where else does it go to? So how does the word of God get to your heart? Very simple. So a man of faith will be a man that speaks. Look at it. He doesn't just take what is said. He actually re-echoes what he said and agrees with it. In thy heart. He says in thy, in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So when the word is even preached to you, what do you do? You speak it. And what else do you do? And that's how you are sure that it got there. God tells you how. Look at verse 10. He now tells you the breakdown. If thou shalt confess. Confess what with thy? Oh, you're not there. Romans 10 verse 9. You shall confess with your? The Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thine that Christ raised him from the thou shalt be saved. Notice, so what are you to believe? You are to believe that God raised Christ from the dead. Meaning that is what must have been told you. Which you will put on your mouth to convince your heart. To convince your heart and then it says you will be saved so can I say something not everybody in church is saved salvation is a response to a specific message what is the message according to the Bible you will hear that God raised what Christ from the dead then you would hear that after hearing that you will believe it. You will say it with your mouth. You believe in your heart. Then you get saved. So, and that concept of faith is how you live your Christian life. I need to understand that faith is not automatic. Faith is a function of you heard something. You then said it and identified with it. it now, like I, that's why we always say sometimes faith is a journey. Because sometimes it takes a while for your heart to stand with what God has said. Why? Because you live in a world with different particular prognosis, diagnosis, different things. Man in this, in this season and, and time of the world, man is very, very distracted. There are many things everywhere pushing for your attention. Right? And so, for the word of God, 
to actually have his work in your life, you would hold on to the word of God intentionally. Tell yourself intentionally. Yeah. So I just went to Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to tell you that it's the heart and the mouth. Or better put, the mouth and the heart. Let me say this well so you can get it. Why did God give you a mouth spiritually? He gave you a mouth to control how your heart functions. Amen? Physically, he must have given you a mouth to, uh, to, to, to eat. But I'm saying spiritually, the reason for a mouth is to be able to control your heart. Hallelujah. Let me say it better. The reason why you have a mouth is to be able to control your mind. Because the mind is where man believes. That is why God is in contention for your mind. So is the devil. That's why the Bible calls it the battle of Armageddon is in the mind. You know a lot of people are looking for the battle of Armageddon that is spoken about in Revelations. They are looking, of, of, they are looking for it that is going to happen in Israel. It's, going to, it's the mind. Well, what are the soldiers? The word of God preached by Pastor Dial. And the things of unbelief. We're in a war in your mind. That is what the Bible says. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's a battle in your mind. He says, above all, Ephesians 6, taking hold of the shield of faith that you may extinguish all the fiery darts of the enemy and even the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Is there a battle? Yes. A battle for what? Your mind. Who are the ones fighting? The word of faith. The word of grace. The message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Versus what? Unbelief. And the condemnation. And the accusations. And the deceptions of the devil. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible calls them strongholds of the mind. 2 Corinthians. God knows this is not where I'm going. But yeah, let's go there. Strongholds. Second Corinthians. Let us see. Verse 10. No, Second Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse 3. You need to understand there is actually a war. But the war is in your mind. That's what Revelation was trying to say. The war is in your mind. But you know when you read the book of Revelation outside of Christ, you think the war is out there. But the book of Revelation is the book of the revelation of Christ. Meaning it's about a message. So the words you find in Revelation is actually talking about how men, how men will be preaching the gospel to the minds of men and men shall not believe and some shall believe. What do you think the Bible was saying when it says there was war in heaven? There was war in the unseen realm. Heaven is the, another word for unseen realm. It says the dragon did not win. Why? Who is the dragon? The devil. Why? The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word, word of their testimony. Did you see that? He didn't say they overcame, overcame him with a, a pistol. It's by the word. Because the fight is in the heart of men. Revelation 12 was just telling you how men get saved. The devil is dethroned in that man's mind. Why? They preached the word of faith to him and he accepted it, the word of our testimony. That's how he won the war. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons. Are you realizing that it's a war now? Hallelujah. Are you realizing it? If you want to picture, just picture something walking in your mind. One here is Jesus. The other one here is unbelief and all of those many condemnations. And there's a fight, right? Amen and amen. The more you accept what the word says, the more in your mind there's a winning going on. Look at it there. It says, For though we war in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Say, your war is not after the flesh. Is this not already proof that the book of Revelation is not talking about a fleshly battle? Amen. The Bible will never talk about physical battles. That's not what he's talking about. Because the war is not fleshy. It's not Iran versus Mexico. It's not Afghanistan versus USA. It's not Israel versus Pakistan. The war is in the mind of a man. 
That is why every time you hear the gospel preached, it's preached in terms of warlike stuff. You hear, we are soldiers of Christ. You hear, put on the full armor that you may be able to stand in the evil day. You hear the belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, you know, taking out faith to extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. The war, the Bible is not telling you, don't miss it. The war is not outside. You know, people think the end of the world is a third world war. Leave that. The war that the Bible talks about is how people believe the gospel and stay in the truth. Hallelujah. Look at it for yourself. Verse 4. For the weapon of our warfare are not... They are not. So there is a warfare. Amen. And then you have weapons. Amen. Church, amen. amen. So do you have weapons? What does the Bible say? So you must reverence the word of God. Because faith is believing that the word of God is powerful. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But what is the weapon of our warfare? They are mighty in God. Of God. Mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of what? Strongholds. What are strongholds? A way of thinking, a worldly way of thinking that you have become used to that is against the knowledge of Christ. A stronghold can be heaven helps those who help themselves. It's just a way of thinking. A stronghold is you do me, I do you. Tit for tat. It's a stronghold. So the war now is Brother Lighton, right? Is actually saying, You do evil to me, I will do evil to you. That's the war in his mind. Then what happens? The word of God comes to him and says, No, it's not tit for tat. You are now born again. You are born of the spirit. You don't do tit for tat. When men bless you, you curse them. The strong one in his mind is saying, no. For 15 years I've lived this way. And I've even been successful. You do evil to me, I do evil to you. And the word of God is saying, no. You do not overcome, don't, don't be overcome with evil. Romans 12, 21. But overcome evil with good. So that fighting in his mind, till Brother Olaito accepts that he is to overcome evil with good. That standing strong till he no longer does teach for that. That is when the stronghold in his mind on that issue has been dissolved. How will the stronghold be dissolved? Not by him saying no. It is by him accepting the weapon of his warfare. Which is the word of grace. Can we get a believing amen? He said, Look, forgive one another as I have forgiven you. The strong goal in his mind is that in where I come from, you forgive us, you, you offend us, we don't talk to you for 10 months. Stronghold. Are you getting what a stronghold is? Are you getting what the war is? Are you getting what the word does? Amen and amen. The stronghold is in the mind. He says he's there. He says for the weapon of our mouth are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Look at verse 5. God is more in, interested in how you think Casting down imaginations. Let me say it better. The devil is interested in how you think too. That's why the battle of your mind is a battle of words. Hallelujah. Casting down imaginations, logismos, the way that men think. And every high thing that exalts itself. Are you seeing it there? Against the knowledge of God. So the knowledge of God is love. Walk in love. If what's something that is anything against it to be, nope, I'm not working in love. And now the word of God would have to stay on your heart so long to put out that old way of thinking. That's what the Bible says to you in Romans 12 verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world. So there is a world's way. The world's way is the way of unbelief. Is the way where which love is seen as stupidity. Is the way where patience is looked at being a fool. But that is the stronghold. That's the way we're raised. Yeah. It says, but casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What do you do? What is the war to do? When you are fighting in a war, what are some of the things we do in a war, physical war? 
we capture the enemy. So he's not saying, look at it there. He's saying, and bringing into captivity. What are you bringing into captivity? Human beings? No, every thought. So thoughts are like the bullets in the wall in your mind. Are you getting it? Thoughts, thoughts. So let me tell you, one of the one of the most important things in your life is how you think. Hallelujah. How you think is crucial. How you think. Because how you think over a period of time will affect how you talk. Amen and amen. If you win the wars, the war is in the mind. In different areas, the war is in the mind. The devil throwing his fiery darts of unbelief. Accusations, condemnations, deceptions. That's the same thing he does. That's what he did to Eve. That's what Moses was trying to tell us. So you look at Psalm 91, for example. There is a war going on. That's where I'm going to. Dear God. Because of our time. There's a war going on. A war. There's fear going on in the city. I may people understand what I'm talking about. There's fear going on in the city. Why? The fear, are, there's a war going on. Then that means words are being spoken. Some of this information are not, they are not wicked. They are just the truth. But there's a way it can affect you. 90 people just died. 44 are gasping for breath. 24 just left the bus stop you left. And now they are at the, you know, what, like... And the more you are looking at it, you are, you are looking at it, it's like, hey, hey I'm dodging bullet, oh, but the way it's looking, one of these bullets might hit me. Oh. And that's what's happening. And it's not wrong. I'm not against the media. The media is to tell you what's happening. But remember that words throw out thoughts. And as you embrace those thoughts they start to affect you so what i'm trying to say to you is be careful the thought you capture because a lot and as we go into the the world the world will become more god worldly and that's why we are saying the saint must understand the language of faith because faith is not about how you feel it's not about what the news said it's about what god said hallelujah Church, hallelujah. Because that's the way the world is going to be set up. Breaking news. The Emir of just died. Of what? Don't know. Don't, don't worry. We know already. So every, the, all of the news is just going in that direction. But what are you to do? Remember, the weapon of your warfare is not carnal. And so for example, that's why I said when you go to Psalm 91, you see something there. It says in verse 2. What does it say in verse 2? What does it say in verse 2? If you, if you would create an atmosphere of faith, what would be one of the things you would do? You will say. Hallelujah. You will say. You will. Church, you will. I would say. There, you see, so you have a testimony. I will say of the Lord. What will you say? He is my refuge and my my God in him I would trust. What else does faith do? How does faith speak? Faith is confidence. Look at verse 3. What will faith say? Surely. Church, what does faith say? Surely he shall deliver me from the that's why you personalize it, verse 3. You say, surely shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. You know, interestingly, the word noisome pestilence is where we get the word plague. On the, in the root words under it, you see virus. What did he say? The Bible says will happen to you. You know what Pastor Dyer said? He said, surely. He will do what? Did, you know? now so and that's the reason why the church is opened so that we can share the gospel with you so that you can know that you can come to the point where which in the midst of all that is happening you can still say surely 
Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He says, because you are sure. Someone say, I'm sure. I'm sure of God's covering. Come and I'm sure of God's covering. Come and I'm sure of God's covering. Saints, please pay attention. This is what you need to hear. Amen. He says, he shall cover thee, verse 4, with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth. Can you see it? His truth shall be your shield, your covering, and your buckler. Look at verse 5. In the midst of the fear that is happening, he says, Thou shalt not be afraid. Why? He's not just saying, I'm not going to be afraid. You are not afraid because you are sure. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what do I do with all I am hearing? What do I do with all of these things I'm hearing? You stand with it. How do you stand with it? You say it. Till it becomes real to you. There was a particular war happening. And I think it is it's in Israel. They were shooting all around. People were dropping. And people were going to shelter houses. That during the war they've said, you know what? Don't hit at those places. There was a particular grandma. Because it was a community. Where is grandma? Grandma is not in the shelter. Out of panic, they went to grandma's house. They saw grandma Noma eating, doing nothing. She was like, why did you come here? So everybody's at the shelter. We're looking for you. We're all scared. Grandma said, the word of God said, the Lord does not, the, is, how did she even say it? She said, the Lord has said, he will keep me in all my ways. That he gives his, he said, he said, that's what I saw. He gives his beloved sleep. So why should I bother? They were shocked. They went back, but they caught the idea of what faith is like. In the midst of shooting, in a war. The man said, no, they can't come near me. Because I just saw it. And I just agree with it that it will not come near me. And so everybody can do something. But when I see what God's word says and I choose to stand by it, I activate it. The war ended. Nothing happened to grandma. So for everybody, it was a turbulent time. For grandma, it was a normal time. Because on a normal day, grandma didn't used to really go out much. But if you find other people's houses, bullets everywhere. Pop, 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 pop. Grandma's house, it was like they marked it. Not tales by moonlight. The real see, faith is you standing with God in the midst of obvious contradictions. Surely. Sister Rachel might not be sure, but sh and faith is not a, uh, uh, you know what, uh, uh, wait, hey, the way and the way. Faith is you and the word of God. Surely. He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Look at what he says there. Look at it yourself. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. You might even say, oh God. Okay, we are, we are confident that at night nobody will come and catch us or nothing will catch us. But how about by day? He says by day you are covered too. Come on, shout amen. amen. Come on, shout amen. Look at, look at verse 6. You know, is it, look, he even says, no, for the arrows that fly by day. Many you are going on your own. You know that's the way I picture my own Bible. You're going on your own. You didn't have anything to do with arrow. You are just going. But arrow was flying by. And he hits you like a stray arrow. <laughs> he says, for the saints. You can just stand with it. And that's why I say, read these things. Know it. Be sure about it. Talk about it. I, I mean, talk about it till it builds your confidence and it, 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 it brings down the stronghold of fear that is permeating the system now. Look at what he says here. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, for the, or not the destruction that flyeth, that wasted in the noonday. Look at verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. These are things you know. Can we get a believing amen? amen? Church, can we get a believing amen? amen? These are things you know. Things you say. Th see, how do you make this a stronghold? 
David used style to teach the children of Israel how to make a thing a stronghold. If you want to get something to stick in your life, where which it just sticks. You cannot help people, it sticks. Let me show you how. Deuteronomy chapter 6. He showed them. He showed them. You just want to get it to stick. Are we in verse 6? Are we in verse 6? All right, Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. I've not even started teaching what I came here to teach today, interestingly. You must have noticed. This is around the lines of faith. Are you in verse 6? It says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine, shall be in thine heart. He now tells them how it will be in thine heart. See, I want to let you understand that you can be mechanical with faith if you have to. See what he said to them. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach. And thou shalt teach. Them diligently unto thy children. So for example. The things you believe. You teach. You talk about. Have you noticed that. That's why we always tell you here. What you hear. Find someone to teach. It strengthens your faith. It strengthens your resolve. Just saying that which you have learned. Learn it as a practice. Learn it. Quickly go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. It's even there. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. And the things that thou hast what? Heard. Are you there? Of me. Are you there? Second Timothy 2 verse 2. Are you there? And the things that thou hast heard of me amongst many witnesses. The same do what? Commit to who? Faithful men. Who shall do what? Church. Who shall, who shall do what? Teacher. That's why when you're in church you pay attention. Because apart from understanding it for yourself, you are going to teach others. Because even in the teaching of others, you get more understanding. The one that does something with the word, he establishes him. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Find, some, you know, find someone to teach. The things that you are hearing, look for a way to teach somebody. Amen? Look for a way to teach somebody. It's part of the way of faith. Let me tell you something. <laughs> okay, I don't want to get into a lot of drama. But please, if you are writing notes in today's service, which you should, right? Write number one. The things I learn from today, I will teach. Because you didn't come here to waste your time. If they, because people always wonder, how does this faith thing work? Is it that God just looked at Sister Rachel and just deposited? She just woke up. Hey, my God, my, hey, I'm just believing, Pastor. I'm just believing. I'm just believing. I'm just believing. The believing is just believing. No, that's not how it happens. Everyone that you call a man of faith, a this of faith, it, this system is how they follow it. That's what they do. What you hear. Teach somebody. Never let the word die with you. Never. It has many effects. And an, an effect of teaching is that in teaching another, you get better. In that thing that you have believed. If you don't want to lose something, teach it. Hallelujah. If you want something to be a strong God on your mind, teach it. Tell somebody. In this season, like for example, have the practice of this is what I learned in church today. Look for somewhere to post it, write it, talk about it. Because in the midst of you doing this, be active with your faith so that you don't look like faith is evaporizing. Last week, it was a wonderful service. You don't remember what happened on Wednesday. Because you are not doing anything with what you learned. Because faith is active. It must be top burner on your mind. You know when you live here now, someone is thinking of what food I will eat, what this I will eat. That's the way life is. Before you know it, it just look like the last time you were in church was like last year. Because of the many differences that happen between Sunday to Sunday. 
So you have to intentionally do something with that which you have learned. That's how to be a man of faith. It's a top burner on your life. Look for someone to teach. And we're talking about mechanics of faith. So now we're talking about, which Pastor Dai just said, speaking. Confession. There are many. Confession. Confessing God's word. In the time of Corona, he now opens Psalm 91. And then you can teach another person how not to stay in fear. In you teaching those things, you will start to see different things happen. One of them is that the word of God is more retained in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, commit to faithful men who the aim of coming to church, one of the aims of coming to church is taking what you find and hear in church and teaching others. The Bible says when you do that, you are a faith. Say faith. Faithful man. Selah. Second Timothy 2 verse 2. It says, commit unto faithful men. What do faith full? Faith full. Are you getting it? Faith full men. What do they do? They teach others. You can say, if I want to be faith full, I will take that which I have learned and teach others. What I put top priority on my mind in that I am teaching others, it will be top burner in my life. How many people are teachers here? Or you ever taught somebody? I'm talking about maybe secondary school, primary school, or Sunday school classes. You would realize that most of the time you don't just show up in your, uh, your, your, your lecture hall or your teaching class. You'll have done some practice. I'm talking about teachers that maybe that's how they are paid. Rachel, I think you're a, you're a teacher. You're a teacher yeah? the people that are paid to do that, they don't just show up every time. We, they've not, but you realize that the more that they put, the, you realize that the more that you put on your mind because you are preparing to teach them, the more you know that subject. The more you understand it. The more you can dissect it. In teaching, your understanding becomes clearer. So never be that one that does not take the message and teach another. It's like you are wasting your time. That's how it is like. In fact, that's what Paul tells Timothy. Pay attention to who will teach other people. Those are the people that the message will affect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, see, that's, that's why if it is faith we are talking about, you will do something with the word you heard. If it's faith. If, like, I mean, if you're... And that's why... <laughs> Alright. Let me tell you something. Let me share with you. If you're believing God for healing in a particular area, teach somebody about healing. Talk about healing with another person. Populously, ah, it's, ah, Papa, I'm the one that is uh, not feeling fine. I said, yeah, yeah. Because the more you meditate on healing, healing scriptures, explain it to another person, it becomes real in your heart. Amen. All right. We are still in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, we are in verse 7. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. What else does it say out there? Thank you. What else does it say? Are you in verse 7? And thou shalt talk. Someone say, thou shalt talk. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sitteth in thine church. Are you hearing what the, the, the scripture is telling you? The life of faith. So, faith as a lifestyle is not what we do when we gather on Sunday. It's what I do in my house. Are you getting it? It's what I do. If I want to develop or practice the life of faith, it's not something I drop off and pick up in my house. I will talk about it. So, for example, you can take up while you're writing in the, in the service about what you've learned in the service, Find what you're going to say about that service. And talk it in your house. Because that's where you are. In your house. You know, it's telling you a breakdown. If you wanted to, I'm talking about mechanical. How if you follow this, it doesn't even be stubborn like stubborn can be. Faith. 
will be practiced. I, I mean, even if you are saying this, it's still hard. Sir. I, I have my heart, eh? Is hard. Very hard. I'm stubborn. He says, if you follow what I'm teaching you, because this is serious, like, like Paul is talking, talking to people whose hearts is hard. I mean, it's hard. And he wanted to get them to believe something. He now told them how to do it. Follow it. He now said in verse 7, And thou shalt teach them diligently to their children, and thou shalt talk about them when thou seated in thy house. So it's not only where you sit down in your house. He now said, what will you do? When you are walking in the way, what will you do? Talk about it. Are you hearing me? Talk, are you hearing me? Wait, what I'm saying, is it making sense or should we just close? Because it seems that everybody's just looking at him. What is he saying? It says, when you're walking in the way. So it's not just in your house. Outside of the house. Because there's no, for example, why are we teaching it this way? Because there's fear in the city. There's fear in the town. So what will I do? When I'm driving out, I talk about it. Either I'm playing something that is talking about it, or I'm using my mouth to talk about it. I'm doing something. Faith is active. Talk about it in the way. So he's breaking it down for you. He says, you're going to teach somebody. He says, you talk about it at home. He says you talk about it when you're outside. Just so you understand that faith is not a mystery. When you want to make something a stronghold in your mind. What else does he say? When thou liest down. He even talks about when you're on your bed. Talk about it. He's just trying to break it down. To, let, let this thing encapsulate you. You're struggling with acceptance. You talk about God's love. Like it's only you that God loves in the whole world. Until your mind captures it. Until your mind starts to tell you that man, man, God loves you. Because you've talked about it so much. It, it has taken over your mind. You talk about God's healing power in your life so much. You wake up, oh, thank you, Lord. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the beloved of God. Ah, God, this anointing. Oh, Paul. You know, you, 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 you just come to a point that you'll be like, no, no, this thing is too much. Not, oh, cast me not, to oh, gentle savior. What kind of statement is that? Hear my humble cry? That's anti-faith. Rather, you say, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. This power that raised up Christ from the grave is at work in me. It's just a matter of time. Your mind will comprehend that you are a living wire. Yeah. Sub struggling with acceptance. Nobody loves me. Oh, I'm the beloved of God. He will never leave me, nor forsake me. He, will, he says, you talk it everywhere. You tell somebody, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that God loves me? His love for me is unconditional. So is it for you. The more you are talking about it, faith is expanding in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know the gifts of the Spirit at work in you because you're a believer? He says, which ones? The word of knowledge, word of wisdom. If you're struggling in any particular area, you can say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because of the Holy Ghost, I walk in prophecy. Because of the Holy Ghost, I walk in healings. Because faith is the taking of what God has given us. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Talk about it. When thou is by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou wakest up. Are you getting the point? Just take a hold of it. Take it. Take a hold of it. That's what he's saying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This thing is at work in me. It's big. It says unto him who is able to do exceedingly above. You say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. You say glory to God is true. Hey, he's true. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies far above. You start to talk that way. Demons fear me. When I show up, I have, a, I have a man of God who is a mentor. He said, when he just started to talk that way, he started to talk that way. He used to talk that way as it relates to, uh, he said, he's, he, he's, he first said about himself. Then he extended it to his family. Then he extended it to his borough. He now says, now he's, not, he's an apostle. He's going to be with the Lord. 
See, I was born to say, when I show up in a nation, the devil knows I've showed up. So, you know, it starts to, it starts to pack up. He now says that that's when he realized that, you know what, when they say that he's doing a crusade, the day the crusade starts, people will just be standing up and be well in their house. They'll be standing up. Immediately they enter the crusade, they are well. Because he said, he just extended it that way. Hallelujah! He says, because I'm an apostle, I'm a messenger of God. So a messenger is coming. He's coming with God's power. He says, when they know he's coming with God's power, they've got to leave. That was his conviction. He had what he said. Hallelujah. He says, and when thou rise it up, you will talk about these things. You talk about it. So listen, we've said, teach it. Talk it. When we said talk it, we said, you know what? At home. Outside. When you sleep. Before you sleep. When you wake up. It looks like we are being mechanical. But the point is trying to communicate to you is, you know what? This life of faith, you will be intentional with the word of God to see it produce. So that faith doesn't shock you. Hey, it works. No, you have talked it long enough. You are So faith has built expectation. Hallelujah. 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 Look at verse 8. And thou shalt bind it for a sign upon thy hands. Are you saying that Paul is going radical? He said on your handband, write it. You, I mean your bracelet. So when we are wearing bracelets, then I'm wearing this bracelet, you know, you just tie to the No, the bracelet is saying I'm the beloved of God. I am not telling your husbands or wives to go and hassle their husbands to buy them bracelets. I'm just saying, if you did, it says if you are wearing handband, wear it on there. Look at it. Bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be frontlets. Meaning, put the word in places your eyes can see. Put up signs upon the house, you know, where it can be seen about what you believe as it relates to God. Hallelujah. You know, people have this on their freezers, they have these meta metallic things, they put all manner of things. Some people put when I travel to Malta, I travel to America, I travel to Brazil, and it's all those things. I don't have a problem with that. But on there, if you wanted to do it, you, you can put it on there. Greater is he. That is the meat. You want to take Maggie? Greater. Okay, Maggie is not in the freezer. You want to take meat? Greater is he. You close it again. You want to take milk to make the children's milk? Greater. You see it all the time. You see it all the time. Before you know it, when you are not at the freezer, what will you say? Greater. When troubles come your way, what will be the first thing you will say? You will say, yeah. I'm telling you, because you are full of greater. As the song is speaking into a laughing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You won't say, ha, 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 oh, God, oh, no, 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 God, no, 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 no. You will say, your reflex will be greater. Because that's what's the top burner upon your heart. We are talking about the mystery of faith. Hallelujah. That's why you realize that in your life, there are some things you are more developed in the faith in one area than the other area. Check it. It's not because God gave you something special. It's because you focus there. I'll say it again. You know, some people, you know, when you, you realize that in some areas in your life, you, you have developed faith in some areas while in some others you don't have. It's because the one that looks developed, anything in the faith that is developed is a function of focus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you see somebody actually functioning in the miraculous and healing, he focused on it. When you see someone developed in teaching, he focused on it. It's focus. Because that is the life of faith. Why? The just. Who? The just. Who? The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what he said there. He says, And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house. He says, You will even write it upon your gates. Ha! What is Moses trying to summarize? If it is faith and you want it to get into that. Let's, let's go back. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. Look at verse 6 again. 
and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So if you want it to get into your heart, that's how I go. Are you getting it? Church, are you getting it? That's how I go. So that nothing becomes a mystery. And let me tell you, give yourself faith assignments, faith journeys. Enjoy, faith, I, church, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Meaning, make up your mind to consistently teach that which you have been taught. Make up your mind to talk about that which you have been taught. Make up your mind to talk about it when you are lying down, when you wake up. You know, I'm just getting, this, this is like an allegorical speech to say, live out and speak forth the word of God. Let it be top burner on your mind. That's how strongholds will live. If you notice that because of maybe exposure, because I have some dear people to me who are working in the healthcare system, so whether you like it or not, because of your exposure, you will be seeing people die, or you are going to be seeing people sick. You know, don't say, oh, well, well, that, that's just me, me, it can't affect me as I'm, as I'm like that. You would have to do something to your heart. Because your heart is not loyal to you. You know how we say it all the time. It is loyal to the most, to the information you put on it most. Hallelujah. So you would, uh, if you are exposed much more than other people are exposed, you, you would start to say much more, I would expect, than other people would say. Why? So that your heart, stay, why? Your heart is fixed. That's what the Bible says. My heart is fixed. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Amen. Church, hallelujah. Amen. Church, hallelujah. Amen. So we have seen that the life of faith is active. My point today is active. You are going to have to do something with it. The word of God was given to you to say. So for example, like I just shared with you, if you say, oh, Pastor, I don't even know where to start. I just shared with one with you. So I'm not the one. I just share that with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, if you say, Pastor Daya, I don't like Psalm 91. It's the Old Testament, if you say so. Jesus then says, if you shall say to the mountain, be thou removed. Let's look at Mark 20, 11, 23, and then we'll close in this service. I've ended up teaching about faith instead of ambassador of Christ. Mark 11. Amen and amen. Mark 11. Amen. Are we there? Are we there? Church, are we there? So, Pastor Daya, why are you teaching these things? So that you would understand it. Mark 11. It says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, someone says, say, what do we do to mountains? We say, be thou removed and thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart. I'm not going to all these places, but shall believe those things that which you have, which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Look at verse 24. So even faith is required in prayer. Amen. Look at 24. Therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things ye desire when ye what is needed what is needed what is needed be no we're saying in prayer in prayer what is needed believe 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 look at his day that you receive them and you shall have them can i show you how to pray about petitions and it makes sense sometimes don't be in a hurry to pray be more urgent to speak then in speech you now take what you have spoken and then pray i'm talking about petitions it's not as that i said it look at verse 23 to 20. read 23 and 24 in context it says the god kind of faith first speaks he speaks and speaks and speaks then he says if you shall remember remember look at it he's not talking he didn't talk 23 and he went on holiday Look at it. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, look at 22, have the faith of God. So he's talking about the God kind of faith. Yeah? Then he now says in verse 23, for whosoever shall say unto the mountain, whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be removed. 
right? And be thou cast into the sea, right? And yet you shall not doubt in your heart. And believe the things, so you can see the issue, hearts. And believe the things that thou sayest will come to pass. You are see, so before we prayed, we have done something to our hearts to believe that what we have said will come to pass. Then he prayed. Did you get what I just said? So, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. He's not, he's like, he's not walking. Eh? Believer, believer. He says, believer. First off, he speaks. He speaks and he speaks and he speaks and he speaks. It affects. Don't be first in a hurry to speak. The hearing of God is not the problem. The answering of God is not the problem. The heart of man is the issue. Are you hearing me? That's why it says, and thou shalt not doubt in thy heart. So your heart must be dealt with in 23 before you get to 24. 23 will tell you, say to the mountain. Say, so, so prayer, as it relates to superstitions, is not the first thing we do. As it were, if you, if you, if you are looking at prayer traditionally, because in some, sometimes people speak, say that in confessing they are praying. Okay, fine. Then we say, where as we confess, we start off with speaking to the mountain. Are you hearing me? We speak to the mountain. In speaking to the mountain, something happens to our heart. We do not, we do not doubt. We believe that the things that we have, that we have said, shall come to pass. We shall have whatsoever thing that we say. Then he says, therefore. So he's trying to make it make sense. He's not saying, therefore, when you pray. Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe. Where does believing happen? Not in 24. Where does it happen? 23. In my heart. Hallelujah. I receive. I shall have what I see. And so let me say it this way. This is something that a lot of people have said that has confused a lot of people. That's why a lot of ministers of the gospel say they actually in prayer thank God about things. Let me tell you part they didn't say. Because in 23, they have spoken to the mountain. They have believed they received. So in 24, they just say, Father, we just want to give you thanks. Because we know. We just celebrate you. And so that's why some people say, I have, I have not prayed about that issue. And sometimes some people say, you know what? I just thank God on that issue. Why did they do that? It, you hear the full synopsis in 23 and 24. So they are trying to say, on that issue, I've spoken about it. I, I kept speaking about it. And so when I just would talk about the Lord with it, I just say, oh, Father, I thank you. Just like, for example, if someone ministers to you and say, you know what, in the name of Jesus, have the healed in your body, right? You know, you say, ah, when did they pray with me? They prayed with me on the 22nd of January, 2021. That's when they prayed. Oh, Ab, I'm saying it reverse now. I believe I receive. I believe I receive my healing. When did you receive your healing? On the 22nd. I believe I, I received my healing on the 22nd of January. Oh, you're already in February. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. What will I be doing when I'm in 24? Father, I thank you for I believe I receive. My healing. Are you getting it? Church, are you getting it? God did not make it technical. This is just the life of faith. And if not for the way we have been taught for many years, we won't see this as difficult. Hallelujah. It's just that you must become more intentional, understanding that faith is not just one of those things. It's something you must understand. It's not just something you must understand. It's that which we practice. We speak to the mountain. We say it. So in this, why did I do all of these things and it seems like I left my teaching to talk about this? It's so you would know what to do in this season. That's why. You would say. You would say. You would say. You will continually say. And you will have what you say. Can we get a believing amen? amen. Say, Pastor Dio, even though what happens, I'm a Christian. I confess God's word. And what I said did not happen should not happen happens good what do you do you stay with the plan stay with sin build your muscles you know when people make a mistake or what they're expecting doesn't come to pass what they normally do is they withdraw from the life of it i understand it from a normal point of view amen Hall amen you know you, you you said this 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 like for example someone was giving a a story about he got tested 
in the hospital for a particular disease, you know, years ago. And then they said, you've got this disease, right? So he just said it. In four days, I will be back. And this disease will have been gone. Ah, man of faith. So uh, the doctor said, no problem. He went back. He confessed God's word. Four days, he went back. I have the life of God. They put the test. Two hours, they came back. My brother, you still have it. You know what people do around that time? Hmm. Discouragement. And in your discouragement, what happens next? You want to withdraw. That's where you must put on your spiritual cap. Hallelujah. You go again. When Jesus ministered to the man that was blind, he told the man, can you see? Don't lie. You. He said, I see men as trees. Jesus did not say, ah, ah, me. It's me, Jesus. It's me that laid hands on you now. Ah, I see. The man said, I didn't see. Jesus does nothing. No problem. Laid hands again. Say, go again. Church, say go again. You know, there are some people I need to speak with who have withdrawn from, you know, like I always say, I speak like this because I need to. There are some people who have withdrawn from the life of faith because they made a mistake or they did not see what they expected. God's word to you is go again. Are you hearing me? Go again. Do it again. Try again. Believe God again. Build your muscles again. Do it again and again. The discouragement that you feel is the devil trying to say, you know what, you see, that faith thing doesn't work. Oh no, it's you, it's your sin, it's your this. No. God is saying to you today, go again. Walk in the world again. Be bold about the world again. Forget the former things. Forget the things that you have seen that did not work. And hold on to God's word. For the Bible says, as you hold on to God's word, what do I mean by holding on to God's word? Teaching another. Saying it. Everywhere. Putting it upon your heart. The strongholds in your mind, they will ebb off. And again, you realize. And that's what we call spiritual growth. Where with something happens. Even when you make a mistake or you don't get the desired goal. You try again. You build your muscles again. And so you now start to realize that the thing that affected you in 2014. It's now 2016. You are better than it. Right? The one that affected you in 2017 is now 2018. You're better than it. You, you've overcome it. You've been able to stand and say no. Where is there a problem? And what does the devil want to have with saints? We are saints. The same thing happened in 2014. It happens in 2020 and you have the same approach. It's the same issue because you have withdrawn in the life of faith. Can we get a believing amen? amen. So for you, remember, 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 even as things get, it seems like it gets darker. How will you win? You would win by faith. For the just will live by faith. Let's rise upon our feet. Let's rise upon our feet this evening. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. And, you see, and I want to intentionally beg you this week. Just like I always beg you every week with different things. Don't forget what you have been taught. Teach somebody. Look for somewhere to write about it. Thank God for, you know, social media. Post it somewhere. Talk to a friend about it. Tell someone about what you heard so it doesn't waste. Talk about it. Confess it in the house. The things that you have heard. So that faith is alive. Not dormant. Let's lift up our hands to God today. I want you to open up your mouth and practice what you have learned. Listen, I want you to open up your mouth and speak. I want you to say things. I want you to speak tonight. Hallelujah. I want you, to, you know, when we say these things, people think that we're just trying to close the service. But no, I want you to say. You shall say. You shall say. And you will have what you say. You can retire to this teaching. Uh, dynamics on faith. You shall say. You shall. It must be active. You must put it upon. You shall say. You shall say. You shall. Say. In the name of Jesus. I walk in the light. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. No evil befalls me. No plague comes near my dwelling. He gives his angels charge over over me. I am not hit by the arrows by day or the ones by night or the noisome pestilence. You shall say. You shall say. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. We just give you all the praise. 
We bless you. Oh, so I speak by faith that in the name of Jesus Christ, those who are sick be healed in your body. Amen. Those that, like I, I always tell people, that we are not against the miraculous. We just say that the miraculous is not what we live by every day. Then we also say that if you ever needed the miraculous, it's in full supply. So we pray for anyone watching or anyone on ground who needs the hand of God. I mean a miraculous touch of God. I mean if, if God doesn't help you, you're sunk. Or you just need a miracle. You just need it because of wherever it is that you are. Right? Remember what I taught you by faith. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone, even in the Grace Reigns community, the ones watching us, the ones on ground, if there be anyone that needed a miracle, meaning the sudden hand of God, to intervene, to lead to a situation that if the intervention was not there, it would have been a disgrace. I pray in the name of Jesus, help in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone in this place. In the midst of the fiery darts of evil. I pray. I pray in the name of Jesus. No evil befalls you. Amen. And no plague comes near your dwelling. Amen. No matter how much it is shouted about. We are covered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father we give you praise. We bless your name. In Jesus mighty name. And the church says. Amen. God bless you richly. Amen and amen.